Now with house plants in general, the best time to do any kind of transplanting or propagating is in the spring and summer when they're actively growing. But at that time here in Oklahoma Garden, we usually have so much to show you that we just don't have time for it. So I thought I'd cover it today. And you can just store it in your memory bank until you use it later this spring. One of the easiest things to propagate are the vining type plants. This is a pothos ivy. And as you can see, it already has some small root initials on it, some small little bumps right here. And so it's going to be very easy to take what we call a single node cutting from that and get new plants. It grows very rapidly. If you've never cut into a plant and tried to propagate them, this is a good one to start on. And it's easy to get two cuttings from this just right away. Just snip those off and make sure that you have a node in between. That's where your roots will come from. And then just stick these down in a pot of moist potting soil or sand or vermiculite, anything that's fairly sterile. And you can wrap the pot in a plastic bag to hold in moisture or just mist it several times a day. And those will root within a matter of a couple of weeks. And there are some things that take a little bit longer. For instance, this Thanksgiving cactus. Now, if you want to know how to root cuttings of these, fortunately, they come with nice little breaks in them or segments that you just break off. And right here is one that I rooted just a few months ago. And I can even root cuttings off of this if I want to just by taking a break right at the stem. I can take another one right here. And then let these little small segments callus or dry up for a couple of days before sticking them in the soil. Once those have healed over, just stick them down in the pot about a third of the way. And those will root probably in about a month. You'll start seeing activity. And what you'll see is from the original cutting right here, you'll get a continuation of growth coming up. You won't get new growth coming from the soil line. It'll just continue on from the top. It'll continue to grow. And if you feed it, give it plenty of light and water, you may even get it to flowering by next fall. It'll take a little bit of coaxing, though. And those aren't very hard to root. Now, some things are a little more difficult, a little bit trickier. This is an African violet plant that is uh, past its prime, we'll say. And I need to transplant it. It's been mistreated over time. But before I do that, I want to take some of the larger leaves and root those so I can give those to some friends. And the way to do that is just pick the largest, healthiest leaf on the plant. Now, on this, we just take what we call a leaf cutting. And African violets really aren't that difficult to propagate if you use clean tools. I'll just snip off piece of that leaf and this one right here. And then these, I can just, again, stick down in the soil. You want to poke them down to where the base of the leaf is just below the soil line. And from there is where you'll see new plants arising in a few months. Now these you probably need to cover with a plastic bag or some kind of clear plastic to hold in the moisture. But there, that's a fun thing to propagate. If you have um, a specific flowering African violet and you want to make more of them, that's the way to do it. Now some other plants that are a little bit trickier are the begonias. And although you can propagate these by digging them up and dividing them, another method that's pretty foolproof is to lay the leaf still attached to the plant, lay it flat on the surface of soil in another pot, and then take a knife and cut across the veins. Just make small slices. And what this does is because the leaf is still attached to the plant, you're getting a flow of nutrients coming out to the leaf. And wherever you've made a cut, that flow of nutrients is interrupted. And those cells right there will heal over 
and turn around what from um, serving as a leaf function to rooting. They'll send out roots underneath the leaf and young plants just above that, right where you make the cut. Now to hold that flat on the surface, you want to take either hairpins or um, paper clips that have been flattened out, anything that will hold the leaf flat on the surface because you want good contact between the bottom of the leaf and the soil surface. Again, you might want to cover that over with plastic and leave your other plant still attached to it to feed it, and that will work. Now, some other propagation methods that you may have seen offered in some unusual places are the plumeria logs that are sold at fairs, either state fairs or county fairs. You usually see these. And this is the same as the Hawaiian lay plant. And usually in the booth at the fair, you'll see beautiful house plants all around, lush green foliage, and these funny little logs all bundled up in a bag. These were given to me last fall, and I stuck them in the soil in mid-October. And it looks like you'll never get anything from that. But lo and behold, a few weeks ago, I had a leaf come out. And the reason I want to talk about this is that a lot of you are given these around fair time or come home with them from the fair and lose patience. This is one plant that takes a long time to root. Part of the reason is that when these are shipped over from Hawaii or other tropical locations, a lot of times they're coated with a thin coating of wax. And if you just stick that wax coated log in the soil, it's going to take a long time for any water to penetrate that and start the rooting process. So what you want to do is snip off a small portion off the end, let that, again, heal over and dry out for a couple days, and then put it in the soil. And what happens in this log is that a lot of times you'll have leaves or, or the bare beginnings of shoots coming out ahead of time. And they are feeding on the sugars and nutrients that are already in the log. At the same time, on the bottom, it's starting to w do what we call callus over. The tissue is becoming so kind of white and knobby, and you're getting the, the very initials of roots forming. As I said, these were stuck in the ground in mid-October. I'm just now getting some small white roots forming. So be par very patient with these. Keep them in a warm place and keep them very moist. And they will root eventually. Now, Sansevieria is a houseplant that everyone is pretty familiar with. It's also called mother-in-law's tongue, and it's very easy to grow. Now, these have way overgrown their pot, and this one in particular needs to be taken out, well, both of them need to be taken out and divided. Now, on this one, it's the variegated form, and the best way to divide it and maintain that variegation is to just pull the plants apart and repot them, just like this. Pull a segment apart, put that in a fresh pot with some soil, and you'll continue to get the nice variegated leaf form. Now, another method that a lot of you may like to try is in taking leaf cuttings on Sansevieria. One tip I want to give you, though, is that on the variegated types, this is what we call a sectoral chimera. And in botany, that just means that the tissue on here is a, is a color sport. And if you cut that off and root that in the soil, it will go ahead and root and send up new plants. But what you'll end up with is just the plain old green type. It won't come out true to form in the color sport. So if you want to maintain the variegation, always propagate it by division. Take cuttings if you want the plain green. The last thing I want to cover is air layering. And this is ideally suited for those plants that you may have had around your office or home that have gotten tall and stretched out. It's a great propagation method for things like Diffenbachia or Dumpane or Dracaena. For some of the tropical plants that we bring to the home, they're a little bit large and maybe not adapted to low light situations. 
And in time, because they're getting less light, they lose all that nice foliage on the bottom. And you end up with a tall cane like this, which is not very attractive. Well, a sure way to propagate that without destroying the plant totally is to do air layering. And this is a simple method of just wounding the surface of the stem. I'm going to do this with just a pocket knife. You can either cut a slit at the side or just cut a notch, a small notch, halfway to three quarters of the way around the stem. And by wounding it, sort of like with the begonia, we're stopping the flow of nutrients to that particular spot. You don't want to do it all the way around because you'll peel the top. But just about halfway, just cut a small notch. And then to help that to root, I've got a little bit of rooting hormone. And we'll just take a small amount of that and just touch it right around where we've made the cut. And that's a little tricky to do, but it will help rooting somewhat. Then the most important part is to pack that in moist sphagnum peat moss. I have some that's been soaking here. And you want the kind that is as stringy as possible so it will hold together. It doesn't need to be soaking wet, but just damp, moist. And once we pack that around the stem, we'll want to wrap it in plastic. So I'll get my plastic ready. Because this is an operation that sometimes takes three hands to do. But by packing that wound site right here with the peat moss, we're giving an ideal environment for roots to grow. And we're still leaving a nice, healthy top on there so that you don't risk losing the whole plant. Now, on some of these plants, you can just cut the top off and root it. But if you don't feel like taking that much of a risk, you might want to try this. If, if in say a month or two, you don't see any roots peeking out of the peat moss. Maybe it hasn't worked. Maybe the site healed over completely. You can just take the wrapping off and you haven't lost the plant completely. What I want to do is seal this up with masking tape. And don't be stingy with your tape or your plastic wrap. You want to maintain a tight seal and make sure that you have plenty of moisture held in there. This may look a little funny, but it does work. You can also do this on rubber trees. Any plants that have a long cane-like stem on them. Just wrap that up tightly. As long as you, as you see some condensation in there and some moisture, you'll know that the moisture is being held in real well. I'm going to put one more piece of tape on. And as you start to see roots poke up through the peat moss, then you know you've had success. And you can cut it off just below that spot, have a nice, big, healthy plant that you've rooted. And during that time, you'll find that you'll get sprouts coming up down below that spot on the plants, so you'll end up with two good healthy plants as a result of their land.